Okay, ladies and gentlemen, in order for me to be able to decipher Moses' courier for you, I will have to use an analogy of sport. And this time around, I'm not going to use uh, football or soccer. I'm going to use uh, basketball. So I will use three parameters in basketball, which are not parameters that are usually uh, used a lot in soccer. So I will use the dunks. The dunks is basically just the goals. And um, I will also use the assists. And I will use the steals to explain Moses' Curry, and I hope by the end of the tunnel we will be able to agree. So the dunks are the main points, which are the main points that Moses' Curry brings on the table together with his party of Chama Chakazi, which would resonate 100% with the population that he represents immediately, which is Mount Kenya. And I could just list that for you. Number one, it is Moses' Curry who began making the noise around to say that they have voted the Jubilee government. But then Uhuru Kenyatta, rather than delivering for them, he is delivering elsewhere. Now, it really didn't mean that he's not delivering for them. But Mount Kenya has always felt entitled to the presidency. And being associated with power has a trickle-down has a trickle down effect with the economic opportunity. So he agitated uh, for the Mount Kenya share of development, which was not as forthcoming because the president was also trying to unify the country to run away from the perception that he only develops his people or the clamor for presidency is because presidents develop their places. Now, Uhuru Kenyatta had his long shot and the long shot was rather than develop Mount Kenya and then go to the rest of the country, by the time he's trying to develop Mount Kenya, the rest of the country will be having an uproar against him. So the long shot of the president was why don't I develop the rest of the country externally and then I can do what I do for my people in the last time. That's exactly what he is doing. So Moses Kuria still vindicates himself today because now he says that Mount Kenya is being developed because he made the noise then or after he had made the noise then the focus came back home. So that is a dunk for Moses Kuria. Now, the other thing he talks about business opportunities and on JKL, he talks about how the business community has been crying and their businesses have been closed down. There is a lot of stringent measures by the Kenya Bureau of Standards to the extent that their businesses are closing down and they're being told they're bringing in substandard goods left, right, and center. Markets are being closed. The Nyomakima guys, uh, you know, at that particular time, there was a lot of an uproar. But now Moses Kuria acknowledges that something has been done for them and a market has been set up for them. So it is a situation where Moses Kuria can actually argue. The president could say that I had this plan all along and I had to do it anyway. But Moses Kuria could as well argue and say that it is true that it was not forthcoming and I had to make the noise. And when I made the noise, then the development came. Now, the other argument that Moses Kuria has is the typical Mount Kenya agitation, which says it's one, one, one shilling, one board and say, uh, and Moses Kuria talks about it and says, uh, a constituent like Ruiru has this number of, uh, you know, voters uh the county has this number of voters or this kind of population and so if you look at the per capita allocation and distribution of resources it is not fair because other people who have much 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 less um you know populations are getting as high as 11 billions in allocation whereas a county like kiambo is probably getting like 8 billion in allocation and so the per capita allocation of resources just does not make sense it is a valid concern it is a valid point and so that's a dunk for moses that will resonate with his people now I want to quickly look at assists and steals, and I will explain what each one of them means. An assist simply means that according to the two coalitions of Kenya, Kwanzaa, and Azimio, what arguments are they making? Or what arguments are Mos is Moses Kuria making which actually assist any of these particular coalitions? And we'll be trying to tally them even just mentally. So take your mental notes. But then the steals are... We have to start with that default position. And let me begin there because th that looks like an abstract one. We have to start with that default setting whereby the last time we checked before Moses Kuria went to hospital, he was working with William Samoy Arap Ruto. He was supporting Ruto and he was partnering with William Ruto, at least from the surface of it. So what steals exist? What are departures from what we have known before, according to how we were able to listen to Moses Kuria on Jeff Koinange live on Citizen TV just last night? Number one, he says that 
the last time he checked, the hustler movement was what it was. And it has since metamorphosized into Kenya Kwanzaa. And his statement is simply says, I have no memo. So that is to mean that he has not been on board. He has not been consulted. He's not been informed. And there has been no mutual respect to just put him in the picture as a partner at that particular time. So that, according to me, is a steal whereby Moses Kuria is taking away more points from Ruto or from Kenya Kwanzaa. What is the other steal? The other steal, according to me, is that um, William Ruto says that when he, no, Moses Kuria says that when he came together with William Ruto, they intended to do partnerships with his party, K, uh, Chama Cha Kazi, to partner you know, into a coalition and alliance with UDA. But William Ruto insisted that there shall be no alliances. There shall be no coalition. But he wants everybody to join UDA. And then Moses makes a very sarcastic statement. He says that the last time he checked, he saw posters that had the logo of ANC and the logo of Ford Kenya. And so he believes that ANC and Ford Kenya are parties from Uganda. And he is waiting for the time when the parties from from Kenya will start being consulted. This vindicates what I have said before, that uh, Mount Kenya is going to revolt because they were told not to have a kingpin. But now, other communities have produced a kingpin for that matter too, who have been elevated to the status of principle, whereas Mount Kenya has no kingpin and is still angling for one. The best they have is an outgoing president. So, what is the steal? The steal is the fact that that sarcasm clearly points that Moses Kuria has a departure with William Ruto that William Ruto would need to come on his knees if that were to change. So it is a steal from Kenya Kwanzaa and it is being put towards Azimio. So the other steal that Moses Kuria brings on board is on the issue of BBI, whereby William Ruto has been against BBI and Moses Kuria has been against BBI categorically. Now, Moses Kuria says that he regrets that some things which were in BBI have been lost. For example, the one man, one shilling, one vote, because the equal representation and equity that he is talking about was provided for in the BBI. And so he said on JKL that he regrets that some things that were there were lost. But then he gives hope and says that let us see, let us wait and see how the Supreme Court will rule, which basically means he hopes and wishes that BBI could actually allow, or rather, he actually it actually means that he wishes and hopes and prays that the Supreme Court would actually allow BBI to proceed. And to me, that is a steal from William Ruto's camp and philosophy. Now, let me talk about the assists. The assists is the game or the point that Moses Kuria seems to be playing, the cards that he seems to be playing, which look like they are assisting uh, Azmio. And it is, number one, it is his clarion call, which is equal representation, and the resources of the state being given to Mount Kenya, who voted overwhelmingly for the president three times. Now, how is it an assist? It is an assist because... According to him, he can frame a message that says that I stood for my people and my voice was heard because the president eventually did it. So the bottom line is that there is now congruence between Moses Kuria and the president ideologically because what Moses Kuria was asking for on behalf of his people, the president has done it. And what Moses Kuria hopes that should happen for his people, which is actually representation, the president put in place a mechanism for representation through BBI, and Moses has shifted that he now wants that. So to me, that looks like an assist in the game of basketball. The other assist here is to say that uh, Moses Kuria says, when he was asked by Jeff Koinange, what do you think is the priority here? And Moses Kuria says that I think it is important that the tension in the country is brought down. 
uh, how I wish the handshake was sold differently, how I wish the handshake was explained properly to the people, how I wish that the, you know, the fracas between the deputy president and the president did not happen. He says that his community now fears the office of the deputy president and running man to the extent that if that were supposed to happen, they probably think it is a curse and they probably shouldn't even go for it. So, it actually means that Moses Kuria is actually championing for the unity call. We should be able to agree on that. He is saying that the tension needs to be brought down. He uses his own words and says that it looks like if a guy from Azimia and a guy from Kenya Kwanza meet in a washroom somewhere, they will run away or they will even fight. So Moses Kuria, who has been a polarizing factor, has departed away. So that's still a steal from William Ruto. But it is an assist to Azimio because he is speaking the message of unity. Yet it is not a new message of unity uh, as Mio's clarion call is the call of unity. The implementation may be neither here nor there, but it is their message, the message of unity. And I think it's going to be an assist to uh, to, to, to Azimio. Now, what is the parting shot? What is the bottom line? The bottom line is in three points. Number one, it matters how Moses Courier will tailor his message. He says it's a thanksgiving and he has invited everybody. So if he has invited everybody and it is a thanksgiving and he ends up doing two things, he ends up telling the people that it is a message of peace. He is thanking God that he is healthy again and he brings a message of peace for his people and for country. That automatically puts him at a good pedestal but at the same time it helps Azimio if you ask me. Number the second uh, the second part of, of, of that particular speech, I've said it matters how Moses Kuria would wire and present his speech. The second aspect of it is if he is able to come back to his people and say, see guys, I told you and I always told you that our opportunities should be guaranteed and our representation should be guaranteed. And look, my clarion code was hard and it bore the fruit. And he presented and packaged himself like that advocate for Mount Kenya, the advocate for opportunities who has done it and delivered, the advocate for representation, and he is willing to be able to do that, which now forces him to do the second thing, which uh, to me is that it matters whether Moses Kuria will align with the president or will choose to antagonize the president. So if he chooses to align with the president, I think it will work for him because what the president is most interested in is for somebody who will champion for the rights of Mount Kenya. He doesn't have to be the one doing this on his way to retirement simply because there is no solid, credible person. And if Moses Kuria can prove to the president that he can close ranks and tell the president that, hey, Mr. President, we might have looked at it differently, but all I wanted were the opportunities. So thank you for the roads. Thank you for the market. Thank you for, you know, this and that and this and that. Thank you so much. And so I am willing to proceed with that. And, you know, like ideologically and figuratively shake the president's hand and say, it was not about you. It was about the people. I was championing for my people. And now that you have done it, then I have nothing against you. I am willing to continue being that soldier and the commander in chief of this community working out for their particular interest. Of course, if he takes the president head on, he is going to lose in the in, in the final mix of it. But at the end of it all, it will also boil down to my third point. It matters who's going to attend that particular rally. It matters whether UDA uh, was uh, addressed the wrong way and they feel like Moses Courier uh, rubbed them the wrong way with the things that he has said. It matters whether uh, the Kenya Kwanzaa guys, William Ruto and his battalion, particularly in Mount Kenya, it matters whether they think that Moses Kuria has actually gone the other end. And so are they going to call him a traitor? Are they going to call him names? Are they going to bastardize him? Or will they do everything possible in the book to woo him? to them. If they are not willing to bend one knee and do everything possible to woo him and say, let bygones be bygones, then they will lose uh, Moses Korea to Azimio. And trust you me, Moses Korea might just be the next kingpin who will end up to be a defender of the Mount Kenya people. That's for me. 
I believe that we have taken this talk together. So ladies and gentlemen, without appearing to be fence sitting like Moses Kuria himself, I need to call the subject of Moses Kuria and say that there are way too many assists from Moses Kuria into Azimil and there are way too many steals from uh, William Ruto in the context of Moses Kuria that I can predict for a fact that you can take it to the bank that Moses Kuria is headed to Azimil. The only thing that um, needs to be polished is just policy issues where he can be guaranteed that uh, the Mount Kenya businessmen in River Road and in other places, they will have a secure business environment. They will not have Kenya Bureau of Standards at their nose and declaring their products as substandard. And that, of course, what is in it uh, for us, that they can give us something. Of course, Moses Kuria came up with a very uh, strong point, which says that uh, the person we support had better be somebody who is going to win. Else, then we better just fence it and see how we can put our numbers together. Nobody really does that. Nobody really does that. Any serious uh, politician wants to be in power and wants to be in government and so because there's no surety as to who exactly is gonna win moses korea has no choice he's gonna make a choice one way or another um and i think that the probability of choosing as is much 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 close to one if you ask me it is the showstopper mr leopard subscribe to my youtube channel and let's continue having these conversations